Welcome to worship this morning from the Sanctuary of Central Lutheran Church in Spokane, Washington. Today, on this third Sunday of Easter, we are celebrating with the service of the word and prayer from our new hymnal supplement, All Creation Sings. God's word proclaimed and reflected upon and the prayer it calls forth from those gathered are the heart of this service. The Holy Spirit, who knows our needs, prays with and through us, and when we have no words, prays for us. Silence makes room to breathe deeply, time to still the heart and quiet, restless thoughts, and a place to listen and rest in the presence of God like a child upon its mother's breast, as the psalm says. Some times of silence during the service will last no longer than a deep breath. Some will be more spacious, and we'll encourage you to use them as feels most appropriate to you. And so we gather, the Holy Spirit gathers us into a community of prayer. Take a moment now to relax into the unhurried pace of prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. You are gracious and merciful, O God, slow to anger, rich in love. Receive our prayers as you have promised, and uphold us by your Spirit, until all things, mended by your mercy, are made whole and well in you. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and our hope. Amen.
God speaks to us in scripture reading, silence, reflection, and song. The word of God is proclaimed and we reflect upon it, letting the word dwell in us richly. So during these readings, there will be moments of silent reflection. We invite you to stop the video and listen for what scripture might be saying to you on this day. And then when you're ready, restart the video. A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the, all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, for and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 4, and we will read it responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me rest secure. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should also be called children of God. Let me start over, please. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it appears that the gospel writers knew that people would question whether Jesus was indeed fully human. Details such as how he wept at the death of his dear friend Lazarus, lost patience with those who had turned the temple into a marketplace, and was a bit annoyed with his mother when she asked him to help out at the wedding in Cana, remind us that Jesus felt many of the things that we feel ourselves. I remember watching a movie about the life of Jesus many, many years ago. There have been lots of those types of movies, of course, and unfortunately, I have not been able to figure out which one shot this scene that affected me so much. It might have been morning, but in any case, Jesus had just awakened from sleep. He stood up, perhaps a little faster than he intended. He wavered for a moment and put his hand out to the wall to steady himself. And that was the moment for me. It hit me like a lightning bolt. Jesus was truly human. He could actually stand up too fast and feel the same dizziness that I did doing the same thing. Weird, right? No highfalutin theological arguments did it for me. It was seeing a portrayal of Jesus experiencing something that I had experienced and that all of us have probably experienced. Similarly, in case anyone wondered if Jesus had really risen from the dead, Luke tells us how after Jesus appeared to his disciples, he asked for something to eat. Now this might seem like a pretty small little detail, but there's no doubt that it is an important one. After all, only people who are living and breathing need to eat. There is no getting around that physical need. However, this detail does not remind us only that Jesus was really raised from the dead. It also brings to mind the many times that Jesus gathered around a table with a great variety of people, feeding them in both body and soul. As we remember each of these interactions, we are reminded that even though we don't dine with Jesus in the flesh, still, he is at work to nurture us and to be with us in our time. Jesus feeds us through his words of forgiveness, through the love of our family and friends, and through the blessing of community. Most notably, Jesus feeds us at the Lord's Supper, where he invites all to taste and see God's goodness and grace. Through bread and wine, we are fortified with Christ's body and blood 
to be witnesses to God's love out in the world as we go about our daily work, as we bless one another with our time and our gifts, and as we serve our neighbors in need. After all, that's how this gospel story ends, with Jesus naming the disciples as witnesses. In the reading from Acts, we find Peter deflecting attention from himself and the work that he has done, and rather pointing to the power of Jesus as the source of a man's healing. Peter, too, claims the role of the disciples as witnesses. Well, these days, one can find people standing at intersections, twirling or holding advertisements that point to retail businesses. The uh, commercials for progressive insurance come almost immediately to mind, and local ads for furniture closeouts. And uh, with a more religious tone, there's a gentleman with an amplifier and signs who's often out at the intersection of Appleway and Thurman in the valley as I drive home. It's a different approach than I would choose, but he is a witness nonetheless. And our community, of course, is dotted with billboards and flyers that invite customers to visit restaurants, pot shops, and car washes. In all of these cases, the sign, the sign is not the business. It only points to the business. And we take away an impression from their witness, don't we? For example, there's a billboard for Metro Express Car Wash on Sprague near Walmart that has a picture of a baby and the phrase, I just got my bottom blasted at Metro Car Wash. It's like, really? And I remember last year there was a dual billboard on Trent on the way to the valley, which on the left-hand side, as you looked at it, it had a picture of the crucifixion and advertised a local church's drive through passion play. And on the right, a billboard for an accident attorney that read, ouch, injured? One call, that, well, you know the slogan. I imagine, I hope, it was an accidental pairing. And it was changed within a few days of my noticing it, but it definitely left an impression. The signs are real tangible, and present in a particular place. Likewise, we are the body of Christ in the world, present and active in particular places in our works, yet always pointing to the power of Jesus as the grace that animates our actions. At least that's how it should be. Our lives and our actions are viewed as signs, sometimes as large as billboards, of what Christianity is to us. We need to consider what impression the signage of our lives is leaving with the world. Now that said, we don't have to berate ourselves if we feel like we come up short sometimes. Even that dual billboard situation made me stop and think after my incredulity wore off. Much like Jesus standing up too fast, those billboards together reminded me that the crucifixion, it really did hurt. The injuries were real. Jesus felt every bit of that pain for no other reason than to show us just how far he was willing to go to show God's love for us. As far as that car wash billboard, yeah, I got nothing on that one. Jesus expressed his humanity in doing human things, eating with friends, caring about neighbors, telling people about the love of God. In those simple human acts, he proclaimed the kingdom of God, and he calls us to bear witness by doing the same. Amen.
The Holy Spirit prays with us and through us. Trusting God's word and promises, we pray in the power of the Spirit and in the name of Christ Jesus, making our supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for the sake of all creation. In singing and silence, in stillness and sighing, when lifting our hands or lighting a candle, we pray. In Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world. Therefore, let us be bold as we pray, trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. And we would now invite you to pause the video and spend as much time in personal prayer as feels appropriate to you at this moment. When you're ready, restart the video. Gathering our many prayers into one, let us pray. Into your wide embrace, O God, we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting that you will receive them into your heart of mercy. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God blesses us sends us in mission to the world. Through prayer, the Spirit draws us more deeply into the beauty and the suffering of the world. Following a song and a final time of silence, we are sent with Christ to enter more fully into God's love for and work in the world. This is our prayer without ceasing.
And now, God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us, keep us, and give us peace. Amen. Amen.